Hello friends, in this video I'm going to unpack and simplify the concept of overpronation. It's a term that we get a lot of questions about. It's a label that a lot of people, um, that gets applied to a lot of people. Uh, some people get labeled with flat feet, which I think is in line with the term overpronation. But it's not really the best term and so hopefully I can articulate that. I'm going to keep this to 10 minutes, keep it very simple. And if the health kit community wants uh, a deeper dive with more nuance, I'm happy to record a longer version or a conversation with someone uh, who has questions. So um, let's get started with what is pronation. And like I said, these are I'm going to simplify a lot of things because I think simple is good. It allows it to be understandable. So pronation is when the arch of the foot flattens. Um, and I think it's helpful to think of pronation as a movement not as a fixed state, right? So when your foot pronates, uh, the arch of the foot collapses and gets closer to the ground. Now, I think the word overpronation is an interesting one and it's a little bit too, simpli too simplistic to really be that helpful in my opinion, right? When we talk about overpronation, are we talking about, um, you know, when it says over, it insinuates too much. Is it too much movement, as in you're pronating too far? Or is it too much time, as in you're spending too much time in pronation? And it can be uh, a mixture of both of those. And so, you know, I think the big thing that people um, focus on is this idea of being stuck in pronation, right? Of, if you have flat feet, it means that your feet are just sand pancaked on the ground and you are unable to form an arch. And so when it comes to being stuck somewhere in a certain position, um, being stuck anywhere isn't good, right? The body is dynamic, it requires movement so that it can adapt to the environment around us. So if you're stuck in pronation and you have quote unquote flat feet, um, that's not a good thing. So, you know, I guess one question is what, what causes that, right? Because a lot of people get told that you have flat feet, it's genetic. But I, I'm gonna disagree with that because I think our bodies are always a reflection of what we expose them to. And if we don't load our feet, if we don't give our feet the chance to support themselves and to organize themselves into a strong arch, right? Because arches are really strong. That's why, you know, the Romans used to build bridges as arches because it's a really efficient way to distribute load. And so, you know, with the feet, our feet are dynamic. They, in order to function optimally, our feet must be able to pronate and supinate. So supination, supination is the opposite of pronation. It's when the arch comes up. Su pronation, when the arch flattens, supination when the arch reforms. Now, if you think of the foot as a shock absorber, um, you know, a shock absorber on a car has a certain amount of travel, which is the extent to which it can deform and absorb impacts. If you think of the arch of the foot as a shock absorber, then the amount of movement that you have between the limit of supination and the limit of pronation is effectively the travel on your shock absorber. And you know, for anyone who's driven a car where the suspension is broken and there's no travel, it's a rough ride. Um, but when your suspension works like it's supposed to and you have enough travel, it's much smoother, right? Because the suspension deforms and absorbs whatever impact forces there are so that the vehicle doesn't get rocked. And I think this is a good analogy for feet because if your feet are unable to adopt supination and pronation and all the different um, sort of movement integers along the way, you effectively have very little shock absorption from your foundation. Um, and the impact forces get passed upstream to your knees, uh, to your low back, and all the way up your spine to your neck eventually. And so not being able to have a dynamic foot that's able to pronate and supinate is actually really harmful to our movement. And so, you know, ironically, one of the major causes of overpronation is arch support. And that might shock people because when people get diagnosed with flat feet or overpronation, oftentimes the first recommended treatment is to support the arch. Now, when you support something externally, the body no longer requires to use is require is no longer required to use energy to support it internally, right? Uh, if I, for example, if I use crutches uh, so that I can offload my right leg and I use that for ten years. I'm gonna have a very weak right leg because I've essentially shipped off the work that leg is supposed to do muscularly um, to the crutches. And so I think we often misunderstand overpronation and flat feet and I base that assumption 
on the fact that so many people are being put in arch support. So if you have shoes with quote unquote arch support, which is sold as a benefit, you are essentially weakening your foot and reducing its ability to organize itself into an arch position and reducing the ability of the muscles to hold that strong arch position, right? Um, we also spend a lot of time sitting in chairs and this has a big bearing on our ability to form a strong resilient arch and to have a dynamic arch. And that all ties into, you know, one of the experiments in the health kit is the hip torque experiment. And that really is to show you the connection between your hips ability to rotate and the arch of your foot being able to form. So I encourage you to check that one out if you haven't already. And if you're watching this video and you don't know what I'm talking about in, in terms of accessing experiments, it's all included in the TFC foot and ankle health kit. So you can check that out. Um, but if your hip isn't able to rotate, you're not able to build torque, which translates down into the floor and, your, and results in your ability to lift your arch up or form an arch, okay? So we spend time in supportive footwear or we're given arch supports. We don't load the body against gravity. Uh, we don't use our hips and all these things, all these different variables affect um, or, or contribute to over pronation or flat feet. Okay, so the last thing you want, now it's not to say that if you've been wearing orthotics your whole life, you just ditch them and you know, go for a run with no orthotics, right? Your, your body requires this period of adaptation. So I think the key things to, so that's kind of what over pronation is, right? It's, the, it, it's being stuck in pronation is the problem. Pronation isn't the problem, being stuck there is the problem. It removes your, the ability of your foot to be a shock absorber to protect your body upstream. The idea of giving your foot arch support if it can't support itself is completely counterintuitive if you understand how the body adapts, right? An area that's weak and unable to organize, you don't wanna put into something supportive and rigid because you make it weaker and stiffer, uh, which is not what we want, right? Uh, and you know, being stuck in pronation can contribute to a lot of things. It can contribute to knee problems upstream. Uh, it can contribute to things like plantar fasciitis and also bunions because when your arch collapses, your big toe tends to move towards the others and that can affect uh, the alignment of your toes. And so a mobile foot that is, is basically a, a mobile strong foot is a byproduct of a foot that's put in many different positions, right? So natural footwear is flexible, allows your foot to, to go in many different positions that is also loaded in a variety of positions. So the best way to reclaim a strong arch if you've got quote unquote over pronation or flat feet is to expose your foot to a big variety of positions, mobilize your foot, you can do it manually or you can just wear shoes that don't inhibit the mobility of your foot, um, to spend less time in chairs so that your hips are actually able to do what they're supposed to um, and rotate accordingly, which translates down to the arch of your foot, and to load your body regularly, right? If you don't spend time fighting gravity, your body loses its ability to organize itself against, uh, optimally against gravity. And so um, moving regularly, wearing shoes that don't restrict motion at your foot, wearing shoes that don't artificially and externally support the arch of your foot is the key to reclaiming a strong, um, you know, dynamic arch at your foot. And that's a really important element to healthy feet. Um, so it's really just being stuck in pronation that's a problem, not pronation itself. I wanna, I wanna reiterate that because I think it's an important point, right? We demonize pronation, but pronation is necessary. If you can't access pronation, it's just as big of a problem as if you're stuck there. And so we wanna access a broad spectrum of movement positions available from full supination, full arch created to full pronation. We wanna be able to move throughout that, um, those positions dynamically based on what the environment requires. You support the arch externally, the arch weakens. You don't use your body on a regular basis, your body reduces in its ability to function optimally. Okay, so uh, there's lots of experiments in the health kit. Uh, to help you reclaim a strong, mobile, resilient arch of your feet. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching and uh, send us feedback. Uh, if you have it, if you want us to record uh, a deeper dive video, you know, people in the healthcare community, we're happy to do that. And um, yeah, have a great day.